We've all been on Zoom calls where you're staring up at someone's chin, looking into someone who's entirely backlit, or you're hearing the crackle of a poor quality microphone. I'm putting together a simple guide of things that you can do to up your Zoom game, from things that are entirely free to things that can cost hundreds of dollars. We'll start off with things that are entirely free and then ramp up from there. Number one, and this is easy, lift your eye line. Make sure that your web camera is oriented around the height of your eyes. And that's really easy to do just if you have a standing or movable desk, just lift that up. If you don't have a movable desk, just put some books under your laptop to lift that webcam so it's really lined up with your eye. Number two is the microphone. So this is a simple $10 lavalier microphone. You can simply clip it onto your shirt. Or if you want to go up from there, a $50 condenser microphone like Monsieur Microphone here could really up your game as well. And again, it doesn't have to be particularly expensive. If your computer doesn't have an audio in port uh, like my Mac, thank you Apple, you can use one of these little USB inputs to add that audio input into your computer as well. Number three is lighting. If you're in an office where you're facing the windows, just position your camera or your computer so you're facing the window. This is sometimes unintuitive and people often like to face the wall and have the window at their back, but by facing the window, you'll actually have better light illuminating your face, making it much easier for people to see you. For another $10, you can pick up one of these ring lights uh, to up your game and again you can turn these on or off plug them into usb so obviously you can go up from a ten dollar light to a fifty or hundred dollar light but even a simple light can really do wonders for improving the way you look on a zoom call number four is really simple and that's really a zoom trick and that's to hide your self view if you're staring at yourself in zoom it ends up being a little bit stressful and you can kind of see yourself and you kind of make eye contact with yourself and you're like why am i looking at myself and it's kind of a little disconcerting, but you can easily get rid of it. Just click on the little three dots by your face and select hide self view. It'll make it go away. It'll allow you to focus on other people who are in your conversation. Really simple trick goes a long way. Number five is that most laptop cameras are really poor. The resolution is poor. The camera optics are poor and it's simply not producing a real high quality image. The good news is that most people have a much higher quality digital camera and that's their cell phone. And so there's a really great piece of software that you can hook up into your Zoom conversations that allows you to use use your cell phone as a digital camera. So it's a simple application called Epoch Cam and you launch the application and it just makes a much nicer digital image. You can connect this to your computer by installing an app on your computer and you have a much nicer webcam, it allows you to zoom in and zoom out and focus much nicer on your face. The added bonus that I really like is that you can also use it to show other things if you have a whiteboard or if you're trying to project it down onto your desk if you're Feature. It really ups your Zoom game, allowing you a lot of flexibility for showing things in your physical environment or being much more interactive with the audience you have on Zoom. While you're here, let me give you a 5B, which is to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. But really number six is background and angles. Consider the angles that you're looking at, consider the angles that are being looked at at you, and just arrange or declutter some of the stuff that's directly behind you. Again, whether it's a shelf, bookcase, your bedroom, whatever it happens to be, just do some basic tidying up, shove things in a drawer or a closet if you need to, but it makes a huge difference. So we talked about cell phones and amping up the video quality with a cell phone. You can continue on that journey by hooking up a digital camera. So there are two ways to do this. The first is using an HDMI encoder. This uses the HDMI off your camera and allows you to use the camera and feed it directly into your computer. Uh, the one I'm using is called a cam link and there's other encoders that are around there that do the same thing. The other way to do this is by using software that's built directly into the camera to allow it to act as a webcam as well. There's a number of cameras that do this, but Canon has recently introduced a utility called the Canon Webcam Utility that allows this to happen pretty seamlessly and easy. I'm using a camera called the Canon M200, which is the least expensive camera that actually has this capability. For about $500, you can connect this camera directly into your computer and zoom and have the USB cable funneling into your computer giving you much crisper video. Now the lens that it comes with is this particular lens. We'll talk about lenses in a little bit, but it gives you a great head start for much better video quality on your Zoom conversations. If you're gonna invest in a camera, there's two additional utilities that are particularly useful. One is a tripod to just hold that camera, hold that setup so you don't have to mess with it on your desk and you can adjust that eye height exactly
exactly how you like it. And the second is a power brick accessory. So you don't have to swap batteries and that camera just stays on as long as you need it on. Okay, number eight, progress. You've come so far, but if you're gonna go down the rabbit hole, it's at least useful to know how far the rabbit hole can go. And when you start going down that road, you start learning about lenses. And so if you want that blurry background, that swirliness in the background, you're gonna have to really learn a little bit about lenses. So the stock lens that comes with the camera is 15 to 45 millimeters, and it's a great lens, nothing wrong with it. Absolutely great starter lens. But as you start going down the rabbit hole of lenses, there's a lot of different lenses that you can get and a lot of the things that people look for in lenses is that blurry background that swirly background that separates the foreground speaker and blurs out the background and this is brought about by depth of field and depth of field is really just a fancy photography word of saying how big that camera lens opening is how much light it can absorb and when it can absorb a lot of light it can really focus on things that are shallow that are really right in front of the camera and blur the things that are behind and so a lot of different options this is a Canon 50 millimeter lens this is about $150 I find this a great lens but unless you have a large room, you're gonna be really close to your camera. It's gonna be really right up on your face. You can't do a lot of adjustment with this. This is a much more expensive lens. This is a Sigma F1.4. Again, this is the primary lens that I like to use, but it is more expensive. This is about a six, $700 lens used. So a lot of options there. I'll let you see what the 50 millimeter lens looks like. So this is the 50 millimeter lens, and as you can see, it is doing that fuzzy blurring in the background, but you can also see that my face is a little bit too close to the camera. Okay, okay, now we're getting somewhere. We have a nice camera, we have a nice lens, we've positioned it at our eye height, we've got the lighting right, but the most important thing is to make eye contact. And if your camera is off to the side, or your monitor is off to the side, or it's too high or too low, even though the camera's at the eye line, you're not truly making eye connection. You may be looking a little bit off to the right or left or underneath, depending on where your camera is. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been using a teleprompter. And again, don't think of teleprompter as something super fancy. It's literally just a piece of glass with some black fabric on top of it. I actually built a teleprompter with a CD cover and a piece of felt and a shoe box. It doesn't have to be complicated. There's instruction on how to build teleprompters online. The teleprompter I got is actually a little more expensive. It's a couple hundred dollars, but literally it's just a piece of glass and some black fabric. I have a simple low cost monitor that's hooked into my teleprompter as well. And that's connected to my computer via an HDMI. On my Mac, there's a simple option in the preferences to hold down the command key as you drag one monitor on top of another and the Mac will make that a duplicate monitor meaning that it will mirror or have the exact same information on it as another monitor on your computer and this is a really convenient because it means that I don't have to do anything special to configure that monitor it will literally display exactly what I'm displaying in another window so what I do is I drag my zoom window into my primary monitor and as soon as it's in my primary monitor and full screen it's automatically set up on my secondary monitor and in my television prompter so I simply look at my teleprompter and I'm making eye contact it's really zero effort because from my perspective I'm not looking at the camera I'm literally looking at the zoom conversation the zoom window so simply by paying attention to the conversation I'm making eye contact so number 10 and this is a super pro tip I saved it for last and probably most important is that not every conversation needs to be a zoom conversation in fact you have a nice little green icon on your phone that's audio only and it's fantastic. Don't jump on every single Zoom conversation. Set up phone conversations, set up walk and talks and listen to other people's voices. Sometimes having a break from the Zoom conversations and focusing on people's voice, focusing on what they're talking about and not having something to stare at from a screen perspective is actually much more relaxing. It allows you to walk around your office, walk around your house, walk around the block and really listen to what is being said, absorb that dialogue and really be present, not staring in front of a computer, not staring with multiple monitors and multiple screens. And so choose the tool that's going to help you get the job done. Sometimes Zoom is a fantastic tool and sometimes just clicking on the green icon on your phone is the better tool. I'm Greg Reyes. I talk about entrepreneurship, technology, and design. I hope I'll catch you in the next one.